We're finishing up the questions of the um, uh, test three review for the physics boot camp. The question 10 says, which of the following is not a way of stating the second law of thermodynamics? The second law of thermodynamics is a very intriguing law. Perhaps it is the most grand law of all of nature. Okay, so what is uh, which one of this is not the restatement of the second law? A, you can't reach absolute zero. It's impossible to reach absolute zero. That is actually true. B, heat always flows from hot to cold objects. C, entropy of the universe always increases. D, you can never create a 100% efficient engine. Which of, this, which of these is not a way of stating the second law of thermodynamics? The answer is... A, A, you can't reach absolute zero. This is actually the third law of thermodynamics. The third law of thermodynamics says that when the, uh, <clears throat> an object reaches absolute zero, a crystal, okay, uh, in a classical um, understanding of physics, when an object reaches absolute zero, the entropy becomes a zero. And you can't have entropy of zero. All molecular motion stops, okay? and you can never reach absolute zero because the entropy goes to zero. So that is actually the third law of thermodynamics. Okay? All of these other ones are restatements of the second law. Okay? B, heat always from, uh, flows from hot to cold objects. Okay? So if you had a hot object, a cold object, and you touch them, heat flows from hot to cold, so that the two uh, objects will come to equilibrium. If heat went from cold to hot, what would happen, right? You would not um, disobey the first law of um, thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics says that uh, heat into a system is equal to change in energy of the system plus work done by the system. Right? So if heat went from a cold reservoir into the hot reservoir by itself, and let's say we don't allow any of the reservoirs to expand, that means they don't do any work, right? So the work is zero. If the heat went from the cold to the hot, would you still obey the first law of thermodynamics? This is the first law. The answer is yes. The heat would flow this way. The hot would become hotter. What would happen to the cold? The molecular motion of the cold would go down, slow down. The energy of the cold would go down, right? So the heat gained by the hot would be equal to the heat lost by the cold. So the first law of thermodynamics is okay with that. The second law is not okay with that. The second law says, wait a minute, if the heat by itself went this way, what would happen to the entropy of the cold? You could keep extracting heat uh, by itself. The cold would get colder. The hot would get hotter. So in order for you to have the heat going from cold to hot, what do you need? You need some sort of an engine operating between the systems, right? to extract the uh, heat from the cold and to dump it to the hot. What is that engine called? Refrigerator. The refrigerator, okay? By uh, supplying some amount of work, right? By supplying some amount of work from the electricity, right? You're converting that and you're using compressor and all of that kind of stuff. You're supplying work you're extracting heat from the cold, you're dumping it to the hot. Okay, so naturally, if you have two reservoirs in contact, the heat will always from, uh, flow from the hot to the cold, and then it will reach equilibrium, right? So, uh, B is a restatement of the second law. C, entropy of the universe always increases, right? S is equal to K natural log of W, okay? There's an equation for entropy, uh, entropy of a system is equal to the Boltzmann constant times ln of W. W is the disorderness of the system. It's a measure of how disordered the system is. 
okay? The change of entropy of any system okay, has to be such that the disorderliness of the system always goes up. W final is greater than W initial. Natural log of W final is always greater than natural log of W initial, right? So the entropy of the system always has to increase unless you put some work into it, right? If the, ent if the uh, system is closed, the entropy always increases. If it's open, then you could perhaps cause the entropy of the system to decrease by putting in work yourself, right? However, your own entropy will increase, right? So a basic example of this is your own room, okay? If you let your room be by itself, it's naturally gonna be disordered after a certain while, right? You put, your, you put your paper here, you put your paper here, you put the pen here, everything goes disorderly, right? The drink is over here, everything goes crazy, your clothes are all over the place, right? Now, can I cause the room to get more ordered? Yes, I could take the paper, I could align it, I could put this here, I could hang up my clothes, right? I could cause the entropy of the room to go down by doing work myself. However, by doing that, what have I done? Now, I have wasted energy. I have become more disorderly, okay? So, my entropy has increased, the room's entropy has decreased, the overall entropy of me and the room has to always increase, right? So the entropy of the universe, since the universe is a um, closed system, has to increase. D, you can never create a 100% efficient engine. Well, the efficiency of the engine is equal to 100% times uh, 1 minus T cold over T hot, right? In other words, that's the ideal efficiency of an engine. It's called the Carnot efficiency, right? And the efficiency of an engine, it always has to be equal to the ratio of the two temperatures, right? And also, efficiency is defined by work out over heat in, right? So for example, let's say, instead of a refrigerator, let's say we have an engine, okay? So we have a hot reservoir, there's some kind of engine, extracts heat from the hot reservoir, and the engine does work. <coughs> okay, can an engine ever completely take all the heat from the hot reservoir, QH, and completely convert that heat into work? If so, then the work out would be equal to the QH and it would be a 100% efficient engine, okay? The second law of thermodynamics says, no, you can't have an engine operating between two temperatures which can completely convert heat into work. This form of the second law of thermodynamics is known as the Planck-Kelvin form. The Planck-Kelvin form of the second law of thermodynamics which says you can't create a 100% efficient engine. So what that means, the engine has to dump some heat to the cold reservoir, okay? Q cold. So it takes some heat from the hot, dumps some of it, only partially it can do some work, right? So the ratio of the work out over to the Q is equal to the efficiency of the engine. And it can be shown that the highest efficiency of the engine is the Carnot efficiency, this is known as Carnot efficiency, which is equal to one minus the ratio of the temperatures of the cold to the hot reservoir, okay? So this is a very, very broad topic, and I can go on and on and on about this, but this is a form of the second law, C is a form of the second law, B is the form of the second law, A is the third law of thermodynamics, okay? Thank you.